Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's LinkedIn Live. Today, my my guest, I have the privilege of having Milan Shetty, who's the president and CEO of Rocket Software. Uh, of course, they've been all over the news recently. They're a portfolio of Bain, but they just closed a deal for Open Text uh, AMC business, which was formerly part of Microfocus, for $2.275 billion. Uh, so uh, a lot to talk about today. And welcome, and so glad you made time for us, Milan. Absolutely, Karen. A big fan of your platform, and I've watched a number of your uh, live streams myself and, and all the work you're doing. So thanks for having me here. Terrific. Well, we have to start with, it's not even an elephant in the room, right? Because everyone's talking about it. Big congratulations to you and your team on officially closing this deal. Maybe you could just tell us about the acquisition and why it matters matters strategically to, to Rocket. Yeah. The, the, thanks for the question. So Rockets, at the Rocket Software, we believe our strategy is modernization without disruption. Mm-hmm. Um, core of our strategy is that the business we are in, we serve for Global 2000, mission critical infrastructure and modernization. We fundamentally believe that modernization is evergreen. Uh, Customers always look to modernize their applications, their data, and their infrastructure. Um, AMC uh, and the AMC product suite uh, fit very nicely with the Rocket portfolio and the modernization without disruption, helping customers wherever they are in their modernization journey we thought was a great, great opportunity for us to combine the companies and integrate. And here we are. Hmm. Wow. So modernization without disruption. I think that's a, a tagline for Rocket, at least it's something I've, I've heard fairly frequently with your name attached. Say more about how the AM's products blend with yours to, to help that. Yeah. So all of our customers who are looking to modernize and stay current with the technology trends of the day, like to do it while reducing risks, because these are all mission critical, cust- uh, customer serving mission critical environments. And that takes a special skill. You got to go and meet customers wherever they are in their modernization journey. Mm-hmm. Rocket's portfolio has been in modernization in place. Uh, with the AMC portfolio, we modernize IT environment and connect to the cloud. So hybrid cloud is a space where we can expand to and deliver modernization without disruption, reducing the risk for the customers. So that's where it fits in. It's the hybrid cloud portfolio of AMC, which was very relevant for Rocket. Attractive, yeah. So hybrid cloud, I I read recently, although, you know, cloud is like everywhere. It's like AI. You can't open uh, an article without having that appear. But I read recently, there are like more people still on-prem than on the cloud. And so I would imagine this hybrid universe is both large today, but but growing as those people who are still solely on-prem find their way to the cloud. That's correct. You know, modern technologies are available on the on-prem environment as well, but many new software developers are starting their software development journey in cloud. So how do you connect the new mm-hmm. software developers and new applications being developed to on-prem? That is what hybrid cloud is all about. And, and that's where we, we play in now. Wow. So you've, I think you've got about 3000 employees now, 770 of which, which is a very specific number are joining from, from AMC. As you, as you lead this new organization, will there be sort of integration of these groups? Will they be run separately? How will that work internally? Yeah, so culturally, and so May 1st is when the deal closed, and the last couple of weeks, we have been spending a lot of time with the AMC employees. By the way, they are now, we call them Rocketeers. Every Rocket oh, is a Rocketeer. And we feel, and the, the new Rocketeers also feel, that our core message to them was welcome home. From a technology mm-hmm. set standpoint, culture standpoint, it was welcoming home. Rocket's core values are empathy, humanity, trust, and love. And when we were looking at AMC product, and we have been looking at AMC for a number of years now from an acquisition opportunity standpoint, we felt culturally empathy, humanity, trust, and love will resonate with AMC uh, employees, customers, and partners as well. And it's been the reception has been resoundingly positive with the customers, partners, and also investors and, and the new Rocketeers on how this is a welcome home 
um, for the AMC employees as well. So yes, we are we are going to be adding 770 new Rocketeers, but additionally, this acquisition has got an interesting element to it. We are also mm-hmm. going to be adding 200 more Rocketeers to it. We have oh. about 200 positions we are have opened or in the process of opening to add to this sort of portfolio. So this, the teams are going to be integrated and in addition, we'll be adding 200 new rocket positions to, to add to this combined company. Oh, wow. Well, so much coming your way in the future as a result of this. I'm just looking at some of the numbers. So you're now a billion dollar plus company collective 80-year track record with almost 13,000 customers, 43 of the Fortune 50. I mean, if I were if I were making something up that would be, you know, positive, I would have these numbers in it. It's, it's pretty amazing. So how do you successfully lead a large global team through this kind of growth? Listening well. I think I fundamentally believe, my leadership to fundamentally believe is that for organically growing company and integrating companies and integrating teams for Rocketeers, most of the business uh, solutions for a problem and expansion already exists in the organization. If mm-hmm. leaders do a good job of listening to the employees, listening to the customers and listening to the partners, solutions always exist internally. Uh, you just have to present the problems and present the problem in a way uh, to the teams to uh, go address them. And uh, that has been the recipe of success since uh, Rocket's expansion, both uh, through acquisitions and also organically. And we'll continue to do that. Yeah. Great. Um, could you talk a little bit maybe specifically about a customer or two and how specifically what it is that, that Rocket and now the expanded Rocket brings brings to the customer? Like, you know, what would a, what would a workflow look like or a, a problem that you would bring a solution to? Yeah. So, so let's take an example. There's a large bank and a large bank is uh, want to do mobile applications and to connect to the banking and online solutions banking. But they also know their system of record and all of the data, which is done for the online, for the banking information is sitting on prem. And this customer would approach Rocket and ask, I've got all these new software developers who want to use all the cloud tools. I have all this data, which is sitting on prem. Mm -hmm. It is, it is regulated. It needs governance. It needs security. I cannot just stand up and brand new banking solution in the cloud, but at the same time, I need to get all the software developers connect on-prem. What kind of solutions do you have to connect my software developers to my on-prem environment? And now we can, we would then, then we approach, they, they, they approach us, we sit down with them and work through, okay, here's how you can securely connect and with resiliency, your new set of software developers onto your on-prem environment and do it safely. So that's kind of the environment. We had we had pieces of the puzzle with Rocket mm-hmm. Software, but now we have the full puzzle and full solution set we can bring to those customers. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, so you're a, you're a Bain portfolio company, which I think maybe predated your time at Rocket, not sure. And I'm imagining that, that this expansion was, was something that, that was envisioned for quite some time given the resources of a company like Bain? That's correct. That's correct. We So Bain acquired or, or we had took a majority stake in Rocket in 2018 and end of 2018. I joined the company in uh, 2020 and the thesis was to make Rocket as an acquisition platform as well as uh, in the modernization of, of space and and also grow organically. And mm-hmm. since the, when, since been acquired the company, we actually tripled our size in terms of the revenue. AMC mm-hmm. in particular was on the list of companies they would love to, or list of business unit they would love to acquire mm-hmm. for at least five years. So this is all adding to the thesis of uh, Rocket as a platform as for m and and also Rocket as a platform for modernization. Yeah, great. Um, all right, I'd like to talk now a bit about your, your leadership or maybe beyond, beyond listening, uh, which I think is a wonderful uh, first principle to have as a leader. But I read that earlier in your career, you considered yourself as an individual contributor rather than a team player. 
and I wonder how were you able, or maybe were you able, maybe this is not how you did it, able to change your mindset to become a successful leader, you know, someone who's leading successful teams in the business world? Yeah, absolutely. If I, if I, if I look at my own personal career, I was a very young, brash, individual contributor, mm -hmm. technologist at Sun Microsystem. I was, I got promoted very quickly through the ranks. Um, I was the one who would be in a room, wanted to be heard. I would, I knew all the answers. All I had to do was just only if people would listen to what I have to say, life would be great. I was just young, abrasive and arrogant software developer. Mm -hmm. That was my start of the career. I never thought I would be where I am today without the help of a lot of mentors. A number of my managers and mentors back uh, as I was growing through the ranks helped me understand my weakness uh, mm. and my, my inability to listen, my inability to read the room, my inability to, in fact, I was, I was kind of, if uh, for lack of better analogy, Sheldon Cooper and the Big Bang Theory, uh, yeah. that was that was me and perhaps even worse, but over time through a lot of mentorship and listening team, I've managed to successfully transition myself from an individual contributor to be a listening leader. Yeah. I love this because you, you've taken uh, well, something I, I think I say, I think others say as well, is that any strength ever done is a weakness, right? And so you had this great strength of being smart and being able to speak up. Right, not everybody can in the room, but over overdone is the weakness. And then you got the feedback and you did something with it. And here you are. It's a it's a great, great success story. Any other advice or, or leadership lessons that you have for other other let's say up and coming or developing leaders today? The people around you want to help you. Mm. Keep your eyes open. And I actually thought the mentorship exists in places where they're not even labeled as mentors. And recognizing that is very important in the IT or in the business environment. More often than not, your peers, your team, they are all there to help you. You just have to figure out how to take the help and how to get the help. And that was that's something which uh, I learned over time and something which I would give and uh, to all the upcoming leaders as well. People around you want to help you. Just take the help. They may not be stating it. They're not calling themselves mentor, but they are all mentors. Yeah, that's great. I I know people act in their best self-interest. I mean, we just do. It's it's what humans do. And I, I'm i always surprised that, that people have a hard time understanding that when someone's trying to help you, it's because you know, it's good for you, but it's also good for them, right? That's why if you're part, if you're part of this team, by definition, if it's good for one of you, it's good for the other. And it's so easy for us to be defensive about getting that sort of developmental feedback rather than rather than listening to what it actually is, being curious about it, and then taking some action on it. Yeah, absolutely. And Karen, and there have been so many times in my early part of the career where I would listen to, if, I, if that was a feedback, I would just respond very quickly to the feedback. Mm -hmm. Like, not understanding the why, why, what are they saying? And the listen to respond was the instinct and impulse, mm. but rather listen to understand. And the day I made that pivot, life changed. Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. You know, talking before we went live about some elements of leadership and I, I'm so clear that, that the ability to be curious and to be comfortable with ambiguity are too uh, vastly underrated. We all get it about the bias for action, right? We've got to have that, but also this ability to to deal with ambiguity. How how do you deal with the ambiguity that's inevitably part of senior leadership? I accept ambiguity, and I you know for people around us, ambiguity is what makes great provides a great opportunity. So mm -hmm. I go with the uh, mindset, and I think there's a, something to be said around the growth mindset. Is if you throw up your hand and say, this is ambiguous. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Then it just changes the perspective. Uh, but if you just change, if you just change the lens and say, it is going to be ambiguous. And now we're going to go figure out how do we, how do we address the ambiguity together as a team? That ambiguity just like vanishes in a, in a heartbeat. And it doesn't feel cumbersome. 
And I think there's a lot to be said around the mindset and changing of the perspective and ambiguous just seems normal. So I come to embrace and so do, so does the rocket leadership team come to embrace the fact that the default is it is going to be ambiguous. The mm-hmm. default is we are going to be as a team, go figure out uh, how to solve the problem. When we do that and when we trivialize the, or we don't admire the problem, we just go and figure out that, how okay, this is going to be ambiguous and we, that's our default and we're going to change our perspective to go figure out how, we, you know, how we're going to make it real and make this problem go away. It just, by the way, builds a strong team camaraderie as mm. well and dealing with ambiguity doesn't feel like a chore. It just feels like that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is that is actually very fulfilling to see and watch when the team comes together around around solving that ambiguity. It's, it's just rewarding. It, it, that that that's super rewarding. I, I don't think a better dopamine or any of the mental stimulus than just seeing conquering ambiguity is just is amazing. Yeah, terrific. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Well, I really appreciate you joining us today. I think people have learned a lot both about uh, this acquisition, uh, what's next for for Rocket Software uh, and your your customers in the hybrid cloud, and also uh, some great leadership tips. I'll also say uh, we just learned right before we went live that uh, Milan and I live about five minutes from each other uh, here in South Florida, and uh, we could easily have done this live. So uh, maybe next time. Uh, I wish you and your team the very best, and uh, thanks again for joining today. Thank you, Karen. Thanks for having me here.